Pahari painting is an all-encompassing term used for a form of Indian painting originating from the Himalayan hill kingdoms and royal courts of northern India. The rulers of these courts were descendants from the Hindu dynasties and had taken refuge in the hills after the Muslim invasions of 1193. Print on the left is taken from an original in the Royal Collection at Windsor. I chose this painting because it complements the Pahari painting that I purchased in Chiang Mai, Thailand some years ago on the right. In remounting this print I wanted to include a number of different ideas and techniques. These included an arabesque style mount aperture, decorative panels and mood lines and a technique called Zarafashan, the scattering of gold. A rough sketch was made of my ideas and the mount dimensions calculated. A double window mount was to be used, the bottom mount 2.2mm thick with the bevel and reveal coloured with the Regency gold liquid metal acrylic paint and the top mount 1.4mm thick. Right, I'm going to now paint the bevel. The paint I'm using is Robertson's Liquid Metal Acrylic Regency Gold and it's the colour that I have found that suits the period just right. You can see that because I put the removable tape around the bevel then I, not have to, I don't have to be particularly accurate in how I actually paint this bevel, I can go over onto the, um, onto the removable tape quite easily without any problem. I cut my decorative panels firstly by laying the paper on a sheet of glass because that gives me a nice crisp edge to the paper cut. My heavy steel ruler and I always change my blade when I come to do this. I've got quite a few panels to cut out because I haven't actually decided which panels I'm going to use on my picture. So these panels will all have been taken from um, Pahari paintings and uh, paintings from Persian and Mughal times. So there's the first set of panels. Once the artwork for the arch panel was selected, the next step was to cut this to size and shape of the top beveled edge. This was achieved by placing a piece of the artwork between two sheets of mount board and using the Valiani CMC with the 90 degree head to cut the aperture shape through both the top board and artwork. The result was trimmed and glued in place. The panels were cut to size attempting to achieve a seamless join at the corners. M218 adhesive was brushed onto the panel, leaving a dry area of around 20mm at each end to allow for the corner mitres. Once all four panels were in place, the corners were mitered, the fallout removed and the corners glued into place. Following the positioning of these panels, one gold line was ruled tight up to the edge of the panel and a second on the inside, which essentially followed the bevel around the panel itself.
When ruling lines, there are a number of general principles in the arrangement of both form and colour applicable. For this project, the principle is that decorative panels of any colour may be separated from the background of any other colour by ruled lines of white, gold or black. The same Regency gold I used on the mount bevels was once again used for these ruled lines. The final technique used in this project was Zafiroshan, or the scattering of gold. The technique involves painting starch paste or methyl celluloids onto the surface of the mount. I use methyl celluloids. Gold flakes are then scattered upon the mount surface and then they are burnished using silicon release paper and an artist bone. Tom, Tom. There we go. So successfully reproduced. Um, something out of um, uh, similar to what they've done in this book here, Eastern Encounters. And there's my effort with um, decorative borders, an infill of the arch, the arabesque arch, um, the um, gold lines around the borders, and of course the uh, Zarephus Shen, which is the scattering of the gold. Nice job. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.